this is J.C. Santana coming to you from the Institute of Human Performance in sunny South Florida. I hope everybody's safe, I hope everybody's healthy, and I hope everybody stays strong during these very, very hard times. It is testing everybody. But I gotta tell you, when everybody's going 100 miles an hour, it's hard to get ahead. It's hard to distinguish yourself because everybody is at their best, right? But when everybody's on their butt, because life has put them, or a situation has put them on their butt, he who can crawl at one mile an hour will distinguish himself, right? So these are hard times and a lot of people are standing still, like looking at life, you know, with the, uh, the deer, deer eyes, you know, like, God. Uh, okay, this is the time to reflect. This is the time to say, yes, this is a challenge, but what is this challenge offering me? Where is life pointing me? There's a, there's a reason I'm being pointed in this direction. Don't resist it, okay? Look for the opportunity. In this new direction, there's an opportunity. Sometimes it's very, very hard to, um, to see, but look for it. You gotta look for it with hopeful eyes, and you have to look at it with a different mindset. You, it can't be despair, it can't be, oh my God, it can't be what if, it has to be, all right? Relax your face as we say in training here. What is life showing me? Yes, this, clo this door closed, or at least it closed for now. What other doors have opened because this one closed, all right? So enough of that. So I'm here to show you how to work out in your house, or if you have a backyard, wherever you can get to. Right? Now, they, they've uh, asked, well, body weight. Well, of course, body weight. And we have a lot of different ways that we can work out with, with the uh, body weight. But they said, what is your favorite piece of equipment that's cheap that you can go uh, any, anywhere with? And, well, I said, a band. you got different size bands. We have the Traveler here. We sell it here at IHP Pro Shop. So if you want to visit our, our store, IHPProShop.com. So you have these little bands that if you go like this, I mean, fit in a backpack. If you have a big cargo pencil fit there, you can certainly wrap them around and get on your bike. I see that all the time. All right? And if you have a very, very small training area, this band is two foot. It'll go from zero to 40, 50, 60 pounds in a hurry. So for short range exercises like pushes and presses and things like that, it's, it's pretty good. And for 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks, whatever you're going to pay for pro uh, type bands, it's well worth it, okay? Now, if you have a little bit more room, there's four foot bands like these, okay? And the cool thing about all of our bands is that what's going what's gonna to go bad on this? The rubber. So if you see, all right, we are probably one of the few that can just take a band and change it just like this, okay? All right, and we have pink, we have orange, and we have green. And we sell a bundle that has one green, one orange, and one pink, so you can train any body at any resistance. So those are the characteristics of bands. When you're buying bands, take that into consideration. What length, what length? Uh, do you want the band? What area do you have to train? Are you going to use it for traveling? Are you not? Also, I see a bunch of bands that are continuous band. And I see people stepping on the bands. Not good, folks. There's glass. There's metal. There's a bunch of things on your shoes that you don't see. And stepping on a band, and even if you don't step on it, if you put a nylon strap here, and you use a nylon strap to anchor it, you will always wear this band here. Nylon will tear through your bands. So, a long, long time ago, I put a nylon that separates the band. And although this, where the band makes contact with something, is where obviously it's gonna, it's gonna take its biggest wear and tear, all right, it is greatly reduced because of the way the pockets are built and you try to diffuse, all right, and spread out uh, the pressure on the band. So with these nylons, you can step on the nylon strap and you can do your laterals and your curls and your upright rows and all the other stuff. Okay, so that's another thing.
And so look for a band that has a separation, something that is here, something that distributes the load on the band at the contact point, and something you can loop around. Okay, so if you, if you see this, this is a loop. And this loop allows you to basically put it around a lot of different things. So if this was a rack, you could loop it around a rack, a fence post, a park bench, and you see this little nub here? See that little nub? That little nub is made so you can go to any door, okay? And you always put the nub on the hinge side. That's the strongest side to a door. Put the nub right through. You close the door. Obviously, close the door and lock it. All right? And bingo. The jam will have to come up with the frame before that thing comes up. All right? So now that you have the specifics, we're going to throw you through an exercise routine that you can do at home. This exercise routine is, as you can see, Adam is my head trainer. As you can see, that's his book. My trainers use this, our first book, Functional Training, published in uh, December 2015 as their Bible. All right, right there. And all I did, so you can see, is I went to the band section and I selected about five exercises that you can do. This one here was the first one published in 2015. And this one here has all body parts, his and hers, all right, all the modalities. Between these two, the transformation book and the functional training book, you have 475 exercises and over 250 programs, all right? So those two are the reference. Now let's talk about training. One of the things we want to do is try to train the body as unilateral as possible. What does that mean? I try to do a lot of things in a staggered stance. Sometimes I'm a single leg, but mostly on a staggered stance and one arm. And I usually have a support base and opposite arm loading so I can cross the body's core, the whole serapi effect, which is discussed in the books. <clears throat> so let's go simple. Five exercises. We're going to go for a posterior chain butt exercise. We're going to go for a chest exercise, for a back exercise, and for a rotational exercise, and for a core abdominal exercise. Easy stuff you can do at home. So let's start with a low orientation, okay, which is one of my favorite orientations. All right. So we come in here. We close this. Make up. And Another thing is, if you really want to train heavy, you loop the handle through once, loop the handle through twice, and voila! Now you have a double band. Okay? So let's go easy so you can see the exercise and I can talk my way through it. <coughs> this is the staggered stance, contralateral, all right, RDM, okay, which is a depth. So you stand here on the ball of the foot here, knee bent, and the only thing that you're going to do is hip, hinge, hip, hinge. You're not going to be bent down here, all right, and you're not going to lunge. It's a soft knee bend, and everything is just hamstring glute and paraspinals. Okay? Obviously, there's parallel stance, there's single stance variations, and there's one arm and two arm variations. There's contralateral and ipsilateral. Sometimes you want to do that for tennis, but easy. The, bet, the favorite exercise that I have for the posterior chain is here. Okay? Boom. All right? And if you do three to four sets and you do, you know, easy, okay? 10 reps, 15 reps, up to 20 reps per leg, awesome. Notice that I didn't do a lot of knee bending. Why? Because Really, the thing you really, really use are the three amigos when you're propelling forward, when you're jumping, changing directions, and doing all that. And that is the hamstrings, glute, and paraspinals. When you swing, when you run, when you pitch, when you throw, it's always contralateral movements. 
So this is great for people who have arthritis, who have knee issues, but you still want the, the big lower body to propel them forward. Standard stance, contralateral arm, RDL, Romanian deadlift. Got it? That's your number one. <clears throat> and then we're gonna go for upper body. So for the upper body, we take the band, and we'll put it more or less at chest level, right? So we come in here, look how easy it is. I'll put it above the, the, uh, the hinge, close it. By the way, these, um, these nylon straps are 2,000 pounds. They're not going anywhere, okay? So again, staggered stance, okay? Press, and I'm gonna do this one just for fun, so you can see the kind of effort that I got put in, all right? I connected both by just running the, the, the cables through, the, the handles through, and then it stacks. Now, the base leg, believe it or not, is the rear leg. On the ball of the foot, soft knee, soft knee, and then tight, and then here. And I'm telling you right now, this is gonna go from about, right now I've got about 15 pounds, and it's gonna go to about 50 real quick, 50 or 60, okay? And that is your contralateral, and then you go to the other side, all right? And then here. This is an awesome exercise. Why? This band throws you backwards. When that rear foot is on the ball of the foot, you think you're training chest, but you're actually training the diagonal serapine, you're lengthening the hip flexor on the rear side, and you're developing ankle stiffness. So you think you're doing a chest exercise, you're actually doing a fantastic locomotion exercise, a fantastic kicking exercise, a fantastic punching exercise, and that is what we use for throwers and servers. See, so don't think that when you're training with a cane or a band, in this functional manner, that you're just doing a chest for the for a press for the chest. You're not. Yes, your chest is working, but there's a lot of different systems, different structures, uh, coordinated efforts that's used on, on, on behalf of the body, where you're using patterns, and the body uses those same patterns or very similar patterns to do vastly different things. So a staggered stance, contralateral, single arm press is a great running exercise, throwing exercise, punching exercise, undoing the sitting position, anti-sitting, we call anti-sitting back in 1996 in my functional training book. We have an article, anti-sitting, all right? So if your hip flexors are short from the sitting position, this long one eccentrically loads actually isometrically lengthens the hip flexors, all right, and strengthens them. So, great exercise. All right, so to undo that, or to work the mirror of that, we're gonna go staggered stance, single arm row, easy, contralateral, where the press affected the front and lengthened the front. Look at the row, okay? Contralateral, okay, front foot, front arm, and it's a row, boom, row, bam. Now what is this doing, okay? This is working this front leg. This is your decelerated leg. That's the position you have to decelerate to kick. That's the position you, you use to amortize or to control gravity when you plant your foot. Uh, that's the position that you use for changes of direction. That's the plant position you use for a layup. So man, this exercise, you think it's your back, and it is, but your back, your back works with so many other muscles. And in such a cool way to do non-back things, like running, like jumping, okay? That's not associated with the back, but your back works with the hips, especially the latissimus comes to the opposite side and grabs that glute through the fascia right in the middle, and that group talks to the opposite hamstring, so you have here the three amigos, left hamstring and the posterior serratic. Left hamstring, left glute, 
right latissimus. And that thoracolumbar fascia, all right, is your posterior core. And it plays with the front core. So don't think you're doing a back exercise. This is a core exercise, it's a functional exercise. This is awesome for so many things. All right, so there you have it. Now we've worked already the lower body, posterior chain. We've worked the chest, anterior serratic, diagonal. We've worked the back, posterior, diagonal. Now we're going to work a simple exercise for the core. Now, everybody thinks that the core flexes, the core flexes with your abdominals. No, it does not, okay? The core flexes with gravity. So if I'm here and I want to put my hands on my knees and rest, how do I go down to my knees? I don't, I don't contract the abdominals. I just relax and gravity pulls me down. Who decelerates me? Whether I'm going to do this or pick up a kid or tie my shoe. How do I go down? Gravity flexes the body. Gravity flexes the core. Got it? So it's not the abdominals. That's not what they do from a standing position. So, you go, all right, so who decelerates the body? In other words, when I start to bend and I let that 9.8 meters per second square accelerate me downward, how come my face doesn't crash against the ground? Why? Because the paraspinals, the glute, and the hamstrings, your three amigos, they're the ones that are decelerating flexion. They're the ones decelerating that 9.8 uh, acceleration that, that the body's under. So, what happens? Okay, I go down, it's all here, and then I come up. So, it's a crane. So, you go, okay, what's bringing the crane down? Gravity. Okay, well, how come the crane doesn't crash? The ball doesn't crash on the ground? Because the crane is holding it up. So, that's the posterior chain. But, sometimes you want to work the abs. Sometimes you're laying down facing up, like my judo players, my jiu-jitsu players, my MMA people. And sometimes you're even swimming, and you're in here, boom. And there, there is some abdominal, especially when you're in doing this, and you're here, blah, right? So guys, I'm gonna give you abdominal exercises from a standing environment, it's pretty cool. Bodybuilders even do them, you've seen them. The, uh, the crunch is like this on cables, sometimes they kneel down, sometimes they put the cable in front of them, sometimes they do it you know, with a cable behind them. I'm gonna show you how to do the cable stuff here, so, right? So, you can do it from here, but you can also get a higher orientation. So, if you want, you open the door and put your band above, above the top hinge. And you can also use the top of the door. I try to stay on the door jam because it's the most solid, it's the tightest, and it's the strongest part of a door. As you get further, 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 further out from the jam, you have more, more error to play with here. Sometimes the doors are really nice and tight and you're gonna have no problems. But sometimes those doors are loose, there's a little space there, and I don't want any, any uh, bands slipping out of a door, okay? So, let's talk about the swimmers. All right, the swimmers basically here. All right, and I'm gonna be here, and then all I'm gonna do is I am going to crunch right there, crunch my body, that is your crunch right there. Okay, now occasionally if I'm a swimmer, I will cheat it, and I will grow it, and then kick it back with a tricep extension, see? You see that? That's how you cheat it. But if you want to do just abdominals, and of course, latissimus and triceps too, all right? You just go here. <laughs> All right, now, I can put the band up there and get a little bit higher, but then it's gonna die here. So I can use a high orientation with high hands, I can use a low orientation with low hands, and still, look, right here, I'm still effective, still effective, still effective, still effective, still effective right here, that's where I'm like, I'm losing. But I'm effective right to here, all right? Right to there. Now, if I'm up there, I'm going to be effective, effective, and as soon as I get here, I'm not going to be effective. So just the area of effectiveness, sorry about the continuous rep repetition of, uh, uh, of the word, 
the area just changes. The angle, more or less, of, of a, a function kind of stays the same. So the range stays the same, it just changes. But you know, if you're gonna do four sets, guys, do two up high, two down low, and you're good to go. All right, so that is my abdominal, okay? And everybody wants to talk about core training, core training. Well, you can see that everything we did is core. When you're pulling, it's core. When you're pushing, it's core. When you're hip hinging, it's core. So now, let's talk about what I think the most effective exercise for core stiffness. The core does two things. It protects the spine through stiffness, and it transfers forces through stiffness. So the, the core does two things, protect and transfer. And both are done with stiffness. So if you want the most effective exercise, simplest exercise, the hardest exercise that anybody will do and say, what's working? And they'll say, it's the core, okay? It's what we call the 10 o'clock, two o'clock rotation, shoulder to shoulder, right in here, look. That's it. No pivoting, no nothing. There and work the, work the numbers. 20 reps, we sometimes go for time or we go for uh, 50 reps. That's the highest reps, rep count you do. And just breathe however the heck you want. Because you're going to have to maintain this. And you're going to have to do that Lamaze breathing. And you're going to have to work the diaphragm while you keep the core tight. Got it? So those are my five favorite band exercises. Of course, my, I think we have the best bands in the world. Maybe I'm biased. I'm probably biased. But... Nobody's using 2,000 pound webbing. Nobody's using handles that you can run a tractor through. Nobody's using the bands with a, a patent safety cord. So if this breaks, I've got a cord, 300 pound cord in the middle that'll keep this band here from going this way, okay? So we got the patent uh, safety. We have the best elastics. We just moved our elastic production out of China because we were not getting the quality we wanted. So I love the Chinese people, love all that stuff, but we went. We went out of there and we're not making them there anymore because we want the best bands. Got it? And the last safety thing, the last safety issue, never ever pull bands towards your face. When you're training with a band, you assume that the next, the next uh, rep will break. The band will break. Train like that. Away from the body. All the time. Never like this. Never. All right? Train as much as uh, you want. With a single arm, you can never go wrong. Remember, if you want the best, I'm telling you right now, the way I wrote these guys is, if you don't find them in here, you don't need it. 475 exercises. 250 programs, all the sports, all the body parts. All the sports, all the body parts. Together, that's all you need. JC Santana coming to you from the Institute of Human Performance. Thank you, Human Kinetics. All right, these babies are at Human Kinetics. Go get them. Human Kinetics website, the best publisher in our industry. Love you guys. Thank you.